the speed is to be submitted to the supreme test. This will make the fourth time the state has tried to execute him. He's been sentenced to death for the murder of his friend, colleague, and superior officer, Sergeant Willie Dunlop. Never before in the penal history of this country has a man survived three attempts to execute him. First time was the gas chamber. But Dave breathed in the cyanide like it was pure, pollution-free mountain air. The second attempt by the state to have Dave meet his maker was by hanging. But when Dave dropped, you guessed it, the rope broke. Then it was the firing squad. But inexplicably, not one single bullet even scratched Dave. Now he's going to get the chair. I like to see the son of a bitch get out of that. Now he's going to fry. Yeah? Oh. It's for you, boss. Oh, Rosie. It's all arranged. Don't worry. Nothing could go wrong this time. Right, I'll talk to you later. I did. You asked my husband. He knows all about these things. Right, Leopold? Leopold hardly says a word these days. He's so depressed. He's against the death penalty. How about you, sir? How do you feel? I'm sure glad I ain't in his place. I know he ain't feeling too good. Sorry, lady, no visitors today. But I have an invitation signed by the governor. Hey, I don't care if it was signed by the president. The warden said not to let in any complimentary passes. But don't you recognize me? I'm Rosie Labouche. The condemned man and I were close. Real close. Lady, if you were the condemned man himself, I couldn't let you in. Well, could you at least see that he receives these flowers? Perhaps they could arrange them in front of the electric chair so he could see them. I want... David to be thinking of me when they throw the switch. I'll see what I can do. Oh, you are so kind. Thank you so much. Mm. Mm. Hi, Joshua. Dave, that's the 14th flight of beans you've eaten. You like something to drink? You know, regulations say you can have champagne if you want it. Champagne? Hmm, gives me gas. Well, can it get you something else? Yeah, more beans. More beans? Mm-hmm. Could you make it a zuki bean this time? A zuki bean? Well, I've never heard of them, but I guess you can get the cook to rustle some up. Hmm, great. I'll have them for lunch. <laughs> lunch? Hey, man. They're coming for you now. By the yeah. time lunchtime rolls around, you're going to be having dinner with hunky number one. Sergeant, here we go again. There's no need to make your confession, my son. What earthly sins could you have committed since we last took this walk together the day before yesterday? Well, how about gluttony, Father? I've solved it, Dave. Now, come along, my son. When all this first began, I never dreamt it would end this way. I had just come out of the police academy and received my first solo assignment. It seems like only yesterday. plutonium will re-enter the Earth's atmosphere and will plunge and plummet with pinpoint precision to a predetermined place on the Earth's surface. The purpose of red plutonium's mission is to test a top-secret device for detecting minerals below the moon's crust. Now, gentlemen, the site selected for this momentous experiment is namely Creek Town, or as the Indians uh, call it, Popok, whose inhabitants, by the way, have proved themselves to be patriotic, true blue Americans and are here to share with us this historic moment. Sergeant Dunlop had ordered me to proceed to Creektown to collect a fine for non-payment of a parking ticket. Even though the village was in the middle of a swamp and I had to leave my wheels on dry ground, I was hell-bent on carrying out my mission no matter what. This is headquarters calling officer speed. 
Headquarters calling Officer Speed. Come in, Officer Speed. This is Sergeant Dunlop calling Officer Speed. Officer Speed, do you read me? Over. Oh, that was good thinking, Sergeant. Sending him across the glaze to creep down on the very day NASA's having the top secret experiments out there. Oh, that's really smart. Well, how was I to know that, Chief? I mean, you yourself just said it was top secret. What would have happened to the population of uh, Popo Creek Town had the citizens not been evacuated in time? Well, probably nothing. But the uh, explosion of red plutonium will bombard the Earth's surface with a barrage of harmless red amiga rays, which will have the effect of uh, fluoroscoping whatever lies underground. Officer Speed calling headquarters. Hey, Sergeant Dunlop. It's, it's, it's him! It's him! He's coming from Lord Shortway. We can hear him, but he can't hear us. It's a brick reception. Speed! Speed, you dumb rookie! Get back here right away! You're gonna get yourself killed! Get back here to headquarters, you hear me? This is urgent! Hey, it's really peaceful out here. You know what, Sarge? I'm going to enter his domicile and tack the ticket to his totem pole. Assignment completed. All ran out. <laughs> hey, fella. Hey, fella. Could you move over? in his class, but he did die in the line of duty, trying to collect on a traffic violation. That poor kid. A little late to be feeling sorry, isn't it? But I'll tell you what. If the stage is that much, I've got just the job to take it off your mind. Officer Dunlop.
hardly believe it. I got the cover back into place just by thinking about it. But then I realized something incredible, something extraordinary had happened to me. Forget all that baloney you told the chief. As far as I'm concerned, you never went to that creek town. But I did go, Sarge. Then how come you never noticed all that hell that was breaking loose around you? I did. There was this huge explosion. Now than I can do with my bubble. You what? Listen, don't give me that bubble stuff. Not even a man could have survived in that explosion. <laughs> Why are you getting so mad? Sounds like you're sorry I'm still alive. Well, what do you expect? If a man gets caught in the middle of an atomic blast, the least he can do is drop dead. But well, I told you, Sarge. Everything turned bright red. There was this roaring sound. The next thing I knew, I came to under a mountain of sand. A mountain of sand. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a revolting habit, and it's against regulations. And what's more, it turns my stomach. What does? Chewing gum. Any turkey that chews gum and blows bubbles is really at the top of my list, boy. Right there, you gotta put it? Oh, you dope. Sorry, Sarge. I mean, no offense. I'm one of Rosie LaBush's greatest fans. I've seen all her movies, even the silent ones. What do you mean, even the silent ones? Well, she's young enough to make that, 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 Cheryl Ladd and Donald Fawcett look like a couple of plain James. You're really crazy about her, huh, Sarge? Sure I'm crazy about her. I'm not ashamed to admit it. Did I ever tell you about the time I held her in my arms? Uh, that was a long time ago, in Hollywood. I was working as a stuntman on one of her films. Oh, boy, that's an experience I'll never forget. Walk it, Sarge! What the hell are you trying to do? Kill us? I didn't want you to hit the elephants. What elephants? Those. elephants were going to cross in front of us. I didn't see them. That means you didn't either. I don't know. Intuition, I guess. Oh, yeah? So who's going to cross in front of us now, huh? Come on, give us a flash of that intuition. Come on. I can't. Yes, nuns no,
super 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 okay see you later okay bye any doubt I had superpowers but they would come and go for no apparent reason I wanted to talk to Sarge about it but I couldn't get a word in edgewise he wouldn't stop talking about Rosie LaBush and there was another time I was playing the Russian centurion and Russian centurion no no Roman centurion oh, <laughs> and I was supposed to dive into the water to save her from a, a whole bunch of crocodiles right well, I had all this armor plate on me, and I sank right down to the bottom like a stone. Yeah, what happened? Well, I nearly drowned. Yes, sir. Those were the days, boy. Answer the radio. Why? There's nobody calling us. This is headquarters calling car 40. Headquarters calling car 40. Come in, car 40. Intuition. Yeah, this is uh, car 40. Come in, Tiger Lily. Get over to 1147 Force Me. We have a robbery in progress on the 20th floor in the offices of Johnson & Johnson. That's right across from the Daily Herald building. We're on our way. Uh, you and this intuition are starting to get on my nerves, kid. <laughs> What's up? Oh, I don't know, Lock. Man, what's going on? We should know if they block the ball. Now we gotta climb ball that way. Come on. Oh, no. Come on. No, no. Oh, Only five more. Oh. 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 Here's what we're going to use, the old charge system. What's the charge system? It never fails. The old charge system, you charge the door, and I'll cover you from the back here. Okay? I, I charge the door? You charge the door, I'm going to cover you from back here. Good thinking, Sarge. Okay. Check the door and see if anybody's coming. Super, super! my eyes to see a trick like that. Oh, really? Grab his gun! <laughs> I say, somebody better get an ambulance. That boy's gonna be hurt awful bad. Don't move or you'll end up like your buddy. Watch the door, there might be more cops. Oh. Hey, Sarge, oh it's over. Oh. Huh? Yeah. Boy, somebody up there sure likes you. If it hadn't been for that platform down there, huh, you'd have been splattered all over that sidewalk. 
But what took you so long in getting back up here? Uh, forget it, Sarge. If I told you, you wouldn't believe me anyway. Uh, here. All right, get him up there! <laughs> what are you so happy about? Ah, I'm happy about the way we busted up that robbery. You stick with me, we're gonna go places. What now? There's illegal gambling going on in that truck. Gambling? Tell me before you act, will you? It wasn't a tip off. Now look, the side of the truck is... Look, I don't want to know. I'm just your superior officer. From now on, you don't think, you don't act, you don't speak until you get it from me, understand? Get your hands up there! I'd like to be alone with you right now. <laughs> In this crowd? Sure. What crowd? Take care. I'll be right back. I know you don't approve. So I had everyone disappear. And there we were, Evelyn, Scardella, and me. You had everybody disappear? You want me to believe that? It's the truth. Now look, you. You stop this nonsense or so help me, you're going to be driving a, a garbage truck. You got it? Got it. Good. <laughs> disappear. Wait a minute! Where were you going? Oh, hold it right there! Hey! Off your gun! Shoot! For God's sake, shoot! 
thing tomorrow morning, you go back to the firing range. You never even hit him once. Let me have those cuffs. Get him up there! Come on, back there! Come on! Poor Sarge. How could I tell him the truth? Super, super! What made you suspect that there was a robbery taking place here, uh, Officer Dunlop? Oh, well, uh, my partner and I, uh, we were passing by the supermarket, and, uh, well, the first thing you know, uh, well, we spotted the suspect sitting in a, in a getaway car, and, well, uh, this is one of the most... Uh, thank you, Chief. Anything you would uh, care to add, Officer Speed? Not really. Sergeant Dunlop has said it all. I'm just fortunate to be teamed with such a man. Chief, you must be awfully proud of these men. Well, I'll tell you, it all comes from years of dedication hard work at a city that I've lived in all my life. Paradise? Yes, boss. And Those two I cops are getting too big for their bridges. <laughs> Why worry, boss? They're in a cop alive. They can pin anything on you. What do you do is legal and above the board. <laughs> <laughs> you got the richest of fishing business in the Gulf, boss. <laughs> yeah. Call the Barracuda. I want a progress report. Sandy, Mr. Torpedo's on the phone. Yeah, hello, boss. Yeah, everything's going like clockwork. Yeah, we're shipping out a hundred grand's worth of George Washington's right now. Hey, Sarge. It says here that your Rosie LaBush is making a comeback. Did you know that? Sure I knew that. <laughs> I know everything about Rosie. Like a cup of coffee? Yeah, black, please. Did what? I had the cup fly over to me just by thinking about it. Yes, Sarge. Look, I want to tell you something. You cannot go around telling people that you have cups flying into your hand, that you can look through walls and see elephants. Sarge, I... You understand me? Look, hey, I'm Sarge, a man of that patience, truck. But... It's carrying counterfeit bills. What? How do you know? Uh, well, uh, I saw to the side. Oh. Come on, we're going to go take a look. Come on. Open up this truck. Come on. Okay, man. All right, let's go open it up back here. You want me to open it up? I'll, I'll open Just it up. Just open it up. Now, what do you got in here? Close it down. Go ahead and beat it. Okay, okay. Counterfeit bills. All I saw in there were fish. Now, I'm not saying they weren't counterfeit fish. But even if they were, there's no law against it. Or is there?
Dave, I've been thinking about the stadium. You know, I must have been really crazy to think that everyone disappeared. You're not crazy, Evelyn. Everyone did disappear. Oh, come on, Dave. Evelyn, I have to tell you something. I'm, well, how can I put this? I'm not normal any longer. I'm different. Dave. Oh, come on, Evelyn, not that kind of different. You see, ever since I went to Creek Town and got caught in that explosion, something happened inside me. It's like a... It's like a part of me over which I have no control was suddenly switched on. Dave, darling, I won't pretend I know what you're talking about, but why don't we discuss this later? And uh, I'll go put on my bathing suit and let's go in the water. You go ahead. I can't swim. I grew up in the mountains, remember? Well, don't worry about it. I'll teach you. Okay. Kids, don't worry. I'll get it for you. Hi, Sarge. What's up? How did you know it was me? No, no, no. Don't tell me. Let me guess. Listen, you. I want you over here right away so you can tell the chief exactly what you've been telling me about all that, that superpower stuff. You got it? And you got five minutes to get here. You understand? Five minutes, Sergeant. He lives on the other side of town. Reporting for duty, sir. You see that, chief? You see that? Those are the cute little tricks I gotta put up with every single day. But I've had it. I've had it right up to here. But, Sergeant, you're the one who gave him only five minutes to get here. Well, then he's got an answering service. That's what he's got. That's not true, Sergeant. That <laughs> is, Sergeant. That is. You know, Officer Speed, I've always enjoyed a good practical joke, too. Why, I've been known in my day to play a couple myself. I'll never forget one time. Right after I came out of police college, I painted myself green, head to toe, pretend to be a Martian. 
Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. But, but he had me almost believing that he fell 20 floors without hurting himself. Oh, that doesn't sound possible to me. That doesn't sound possible? Huh. Let me show you something. Huh. Be right back. Super Snooper! As you can see from this x-ray, taken right after his admission this morning, there isn't an unbroken bone in his body. <laughs> Beats me how he's still alive. Sarge. Yeah, kid, what is it? I don't want, I don't want Evelyn to see me this way. Oh, okay. All right. What did he say? Uh, nothing, nothing. Uh, listen, Hockey, uh, why don't we wait outside over here? There's really nothing we can do, and we might as well get done. We took other x-rays after we put him in his cat. They should be ready soon. But I'm afraid that, well, even if the bone's set correctly, the internal damage is too extensive to encourage optimism. If you'll excuse me. Why did you do it, Officer Speed? Were you that unhappy on the force? Chief. What? The door. What about the door? Dr. Asanza, 2 Dr. Asanza, 2 It's a miracle. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. Look, we took another set of x-rays of Officer Speed. The bones are completely healed. It's a miracle. <gasps> Dave. <gasps> Dave, it's a miracle. <gasps> the doctor said... Dave? Dave. Dave. Oh, Dave! Oh, sorry, Chief. Chief! I'd been looking for Silvius all day. He was the only person who had seen my two falls. I had a hunch he could explain what went wrong the second time. Thank you very much. Do you always work here? I guess if you call peddling tickets all day long working, yeah, I am. Why? I'm looking for an old guy named Silvius. I've heard he worked here a couple of times. What's it to you? Oh, yeah, Silvius, I know him. He's a ventriloquist, really a great talent. You want to know something? He can actually make a doggy talk like a human being. I think he's had a little rough lately. What do you mean? Well, for the last year, I haven't seen him around here. That's quite a while. I think he owes somebody some money or something. You got any idea where he lives? The last time I heard, he was living over on River Road, in an old shack, selling dogs or something. Thanks. Hey, mister. I didn't think nothing at the time, but a little while ago, there were three guys over here asking about him. What did you tell them? Same thing I told you. Thanks again. It's all right. Hey, Silvius. Anybody home? Silvius.
biscuit? There you go. Hey, Silvius. Hello? Silvius! Hey, Silvius! You here? Search of the joint. What are we looking for, Paradise? 30,000 and Mr. Torpedo paid for the talkie to Chihuahua. Well, what's going to talk? That's the way the boss got rid of it. That's the way he wants to get rid of a Silvius or two. Anything? Nothing, Paradise. Check in the closet. Hi. Hi. There's a guy in there, but uh, he isn't Sylvius. Hi. Who are you? I know who I am, and I know who you are. But do you know who he is? Hey, Paradise. I think I've seen this guy on TV, but I can't uh, remember. Whether he's a singer or an evangelist. I don't care what he is. What are you doing here? And where is the Silvius? Beats me. But even if I knew, I wouldn't tell you three jerks. What did you say? He said it were three jerks, Paradise. Uh, yeah. He's <laughs> yours. <laughs> Who goes with the guitar, then it's my turn. <laughs> this is it. That's <laughs> good, huh? You're the tops, Paradise. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> he want to be back so soon. Hey, you guys going? I gotta have a chance to get even. Should I get a guitar, Paradise? Go get it. This is yours, the slot machine. No mind, mister. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. 
told you, you should let me get the guitar paradise. Yeah, that's the best idea. <laughs> Now be good boys. And now here's a flash for all you movie buffs. Famous film star Rosie LaBouche will be arriving in our fair city at 4 o'clock this p.m. For those who haven't seen the billboards, Miss LaBouche will be appearing every night this week hey, at Tony Torpedo's yes, Miss the hottest spot. Go to the airport and pick her up. Did you? Did you find the old man with the dogs yet? No, boss, we... Well, find him! Yeah. You know, he and I got some unfinished business. Uh, uh. You know, I got the nervous stomach. You know that, don't you? Now, well, go on, get out of here. Where are you going? Yeah. The back door! All right, boss. <laughs> How come you got our assignment changed to the seaplane bay today, Sarge? My boy, I'll tell you something. There's some people that only fall in love one time in their life. I'm one of those lucky people. What the heck does that mean? Never mind. You'll find out. Hey. Those goons belong to Tony Torpedo. They must have come down to pick her up. Pick who up? Rosie LaBouche, you dope. Oh. If only I could talk to her, just once. Talk to her? What about the time you held her in your arms? Well, I... I... I, I, I just helped her down from the stagecoach, that's all. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> hey, here she comes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm? Oh, <laughs> isn't she beautiful? Oh, if only I could talk to her. Sarge, I'll fix it for you. No, 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 you stay out of this. Don't worry, no superpowers. Just take the patrol car over to arrivals. Hey, that's the guy we met at Sylvia's house. Yeah, car. that's all we need. Let's go. Oh. Oh. Driver's license, please. Please, an officer. We are in a hurry. We got to pick up the lady. Registration, please. Give me the registration. Oh. Ah. Oh. What's the matter? My fingers. What about your fingers? They're stuck in the door. Oh, yeah. You ought to be more oh. careful. Get out of the car, all of you. Let's have a roadside test. Miss LaBouche, it's good to see you in town. Well, thank, thank you very much. Yes, it's good Plan to be... Plan to stay here. long, ma'am? Yes, I do, I think. Probably I'll be here for quite a long time. Wonderful. Well, I have some business. Hold out your arms. Lift your left leg. I said your left leg. Now play angels. Play angels? Yeah, you know, flap your wings. Like this? Right. Faster. Faster. Ah. Uh. Forget it. You'll never fly. Ah, uh, 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 your arms. Kick your right leg. Left. Right. Left. Right. Left. Right. Left. Right. Good. Keep it up.
Thank you. Uh, 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 pardon me, but may I be of help, Miss Labouche? Oh, you know my name, Sergeant. Everybody does. You may not remember me, but I worked in a few of your films, and I'll never forget as I... Sergeant. Yes? Would you do me a favor? Anything. Just ask. I, I must be at my hotel within ten minutes. I, I'm expecting a very important phone call. I would consider it an honor oh. if I could take you. <laughs> my bags. Oh. <laughs> Are you married, Sergeant? Oh, 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 I've always been dedicated to my work and to my mother. <laughs> but then I, I got into uh, motion pictures. Oh, watch your scarf, ma'am. Oh. That's it. Oh, uh, and then I got into work there, and uh, I, I, I was never much of a... I'm an actor, but I always like to do a lot of stunts, you see. So I got into stunt work for a while, but then I got a kind of... Okay, that's enough. Let's double check your reflexes. Move over here. Here. Okay. Now you hit him, and you make sure you duck real fast. Come I on. gotta hit him? You duck real fast. Now you hit him, and you duck real fast. Now you hit him, and you duck real fast. Wait, now all together, come on. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. That's it. Okay, you passed the test. Get back in the car. Okay, you can go. <laughs> Your life. I'm going to report you for reckless driving and damage to private property. License, please. What were you thinking about, Sergeant? What possessed you to use your patrol car as a taxi? Well, it was an emergency, Chief. I was just doing my duty. Your duty is to catch criminals, not play Boy Scout. Look at this desk, covered with complaints. Do you know this city's been overtaken with a rash of tarnished green? What? Now look at this. Ten Thousands of these have been picked up in the past week. Who picked them up? Who found them? Where, where, who lost them? They're counterfeit dummy. You know, it's no wonder people take them where not even police sergeants can tell the difference. Who questions a lousy dollar bill anyway? You know, the guy who thought this up is a genius. And I want you and Officer Speed to bring him in. Uh, put this on uh, Mama Loves Money next race, Miss Lovell. All right. I think I just spotted Silvius. Ah, uh, stick to him like a piece of honey paradise. Don't worry, boss. <laughs> and there goes Speedy. How should I know? I don't fix anything like that. Are you here because of Rosie? And it's into the back Are you kidding? The on my day off, I become a connoisseur of the dog in order to make enough money to pay taxes so that you can guard me. Although why I bothered today, I don't know. Man's best friend. Uh, wait a minute, Sarge. Sure you want to do that? Why not? Because he's going to win. Ha! <laughs> that dog couldn't win even if the rabbit carried him.
Hey, Dan, I'm going up to get my winnings. 16 to 1. <laughs> Super Stupid. Only a vanilla, please, honey. Keep the change. I've been looking all over for you. I have to talk to you. Yeah, sorry, I don't have time now. It was that cop who... What cop? What are you talking about? It was the one who is the friend of the friend of your friend. I mean, Madame the Bush. The idiot means Dave Speed. He's the partner of the chubby cop who's madly in love with me. I'm not interested in love stories. I'm interested in an old man. You've got to find him, and I want him found. Do you understand? Why do you always tell me these things? When I start to eat... Boss. Wherever he is, he's late. Wrong, Sarge. You're late. Well, you're floating. Now tell me you don't believe he has superpowers. Hmm. C come down from there. Why don't you come up here? It's fun. Are you crazy? OK. Evelyn, did you bring what I asked you to bring? Sure did. Get the hell down from up there. Now, calm down. <laughs> I could have waited till I was ready. I'm sorry, Dave. That's all right. Now put it away, please. Right. Ready, Sarge? Watch. <laughs> See? OK, Evelyn. Please show it to me again. Wait. Now. Okay. <gasps> Thanks. I finally found out why my powers come and go. It's a color red. Red? What are you talking about? <laughs> Whenever I see red, I lose my powers. Let me try and explain it to you. 
The plutonic explosion caused a blinding red light that gave me the superpowers. But the same color red also takes them away whenever I see it. Get it, Sarge? Two forces, equal but opposite, equal zero. Remember the nuns? And, and when I jumped out the window, and... And the stadium? Uh, right, and the fish truck. Oh, yeah, the fish truck. Ha, yeah. I sure remember that. You really made me look like a stunk. Sarge, the inside of the truck was all red. That's why I couldn't see the phony bills any longer. Are you trying to tell me that the money was inside the fish? You got it. <laughs> you got it. Now, can you remember what was written on the side of the truck? Yeah, Torpedo Fish Company. Right, that's our man, Torpedo. Get it? No, I don't get it. What do you want me to do, arrest the guy? Sure. <laughs> can you imagine what the judge and jury would think if you stood up in court and say, I realize those counterfeit bills were inside the fish because I looked through the side of the truck. Why, they lock you up. But, Sarge, I... Come on. You need positive proof, and I know where to get it. Uh, will you quit thinking I'm nuts? Don't you realize a man's thoughts are his own? His own private thoughts? So stop butting in. I've never seen him so mad. <laughs> you should spend time in the car with him. Oh, it's not all his fault. Why not? Dave, something's not right. Evelyn, what's the matter? Well, it's your superpowers. I mean, I don't know if I'll ever be able to get used to them. I love you, but I want you the way you were. Come on, Evelyn. Be positive. Look. I can wash dishes, do the laundry, make the bed, chop vegetables just by thinking about it. Imagine you're going to marry a walking, talking domestic appliance. Batteries included. Oh, terrific. A human Cuisinart. When you want to be serious, you can find me at home. Please. <laughs> Evelyn, I've got these superpowers, and there's nothing I can do about it. And you know something? Hmm. I like them. And I think you'll grow to like them, too. Look, I love you, Evelyn. And we are going to get married, whether you like it or not. All right. Now you can relax. That same evening, I got a list of places where the phony bills had turned up and set out to find positive proof that would point the finger at Tony Torpedo. in the corner. Hey, sir. Sir. Hey, knock it off, will you? What do you want? Sorry, but I'm looking for the owner of this place. Well, you found it. Now get lost. Oh. I got five bucks riding on this ball. Mm -hmm. Five more says you won't make it. Make it ten and you got a bet. Ten? Huh, wait a minute. 
All right, you're on. Okay, it's your money, sucker. <laughs> You shouldn't laugh at somebody else's misfortune. I know how you feel, mister. Can we settle now? You do, huh? Yeah, come on. Dumb luck. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten on the head. Ten good American bucks, kid. Enjoy yourself. Thanks. Where's the John? It's back there. Hey, it's locked. What the hell do you mean it's locked? That thing is always open. You try it. Ah, wait a minute, will you? Let's stop fooling around. You're in bad trouble. Yeah. Ten good American bucks. Hey, these are really going down the drain. You're laundering phony bills, and I want a piece of the action, Clyde. Five hundred a week, and I'll stay off your back. Nothing smaller than a five. Now I understand. <laughs> Cops are all alike. Here. You can tell Torpedo the time has come to share the pie. to hear my plan or don't you? Oh, sure. <sighs> Phase one, convince the underworld that I'm a crooked cop. Phase two, catch torpedo in the act. Marvelous. Just marvelous. Thanks. I appreciate your liking it. Like it? I love it. <laughs> The chief finds out about it and tell him you were questioning a witness. Dancing on duty is a violation of police code 42 slash B. Oh, Sarge, you're a credit to the force. Uh, besides, I don't know how to dance. Sarge, look at me. You're going to dance like Fred Astaire. Like Fred Astaire. I'm going to dance like Fred Astaire.
someone who really wants to dance with me. Shall we dance, Sergeant? I'd love to. Ah. Divinely. I'm just trying to keep up with you, but... Oh, I know. You've come to tell me that your boss wants to see me enough to follow you to his office. I come to tell you that the boss wants to see you, and that uh, you have to follow me to his office. Hey, wait a moment. Didn't you just tell me that? Did I? Oh. Let's go. Hey, man. How come you always throw 12? Because torpedoes men are impossible to beat. Roll me another. Cover that. Yeah. <laughs> Good boy. Hey, that's hard to beat. It's impossible to beat. No kidding. Yeah. May I try? Be my guest. <laughs> Roll them, kid. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Catch a tiger by his toe. If he hollers, let him go. Now that's hard to beat. Take the money and run. Come on, let's go. <laughs> but thank you. You see, he has these superpowers. He can do anything he wants and make other people do the same. You make him sound like something out of a comic strip. Oh, no, no. Oh, no. He's just as human as we are. <laughs> oh. The only thing is that every time he sees red, Hmm. He loses his superpower. Oh, really? So you're, uh, you're, uh, police officer Davy Speed, eh? You've been making a lot of noise around town. I think it's about, about time you and I sat down. Super, 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 super. You lousy, flat-footed, smart ass. Ain't fooling me. I know you're pretending to be a corrupt cop because you hope I'll admit to putting out a contract on old Sylvia's. Sure, I had that no good bump killed. What, you think I'm going to tell you? No. Forget it. I ain't got rocks in my head. And there's no way I'm ever going to tell you. Where I print those $41 bills, my men pass out on the streets. Boss! And you'll never find out that the press is set up in my fishing boat, the Barracuda, which is anchored in the Gulf. You know why? Why? Because there's no cop smarter than I am. <laughs> hey, 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 Flatfoot. <laughs> I bet you can't guess how we transport those phony bills from the boat to the drop zones. Well, let me see. Sewn into the fish, sewn into the bellies of the fish, your boat catches, right? Thank you, Mr. Torpedo. That's all I wanted to know. Look, there she is, Barracuda. Looks deserted. Don't be too sure. I wish you could fly this thing so I could go down and take a look. Well, I'll go down. You. I don't think that's a good idea, Tom. Why not? What's the matter? Think I'm too old? Come on, get us some of that old bathtub over there. I'll show you. Anything you say.
I'm going to go down below and take a look, okay? Okay, Sarge. I found the hold of it anywhere. Hey, gang, you read me? Are they clear? What's happening down there? It's your fiddlestick pulling your leg. They've got a stole on board. No fighting press, nothing. Search again. It's got to be there. Okay. But I tell you, there's nothing down here. I found it. It's a counterfeiter's dream. Holy Bill, plate, red, <laughs> even fish, Dave. <laughs> we got enough evidence here to put Torpedo away for life. I'm telling you. Now go back to town and get some help. I'll be waiting for you, baby. Okay, Sarge. I'll be back before you know it. Bye. We're sinking the Barracuda. We caught one of the cops snooping around. We're gonna leave him on board to go down with her. Over and out. Let's move. Move it, move it. We don't have a lot of time before the boat goes down. Everybody, over the boat. Officer Speed, what have you done with him? Done with whom, Chief? Sergeant Dunlop. Oh, Sarge. He's on the Barracuda. I told you so over the radio. That's where Tony Torpedo's been printing the phony bills. Why don't you ask her? She can tell you a lot more than I can. Chief, I told you everything I know. Last night at the Macombo, I overheard that man trying to extort protection money from Mr. Torpedo. He's a corrupt cop, and Sergeant Dunlop found out. That's why he had to kill him. After all, Chief, he couldn't afford to let him talk. <laughs> That's ridiculous. She's lying. Why don't you send a patroller to check on the Barracuda? You'll find Sarge there sitting on the evidence. We just had a report from the Coast Guard, Chief. There's no boat within a 50-mile radius of the coordinates given to us by Officer Speed. You're under arrest for the first-degree murder of Police Sergeant William Dunlap. There's nothing worse than a corrupt cop speed. Take him away 
and lock him up. And that, my friends, is how I ended up on death row. During the trial, Rosie the Bush made sure I couldn't use my superpowers. And she always arranged to have something red clearly visible any place I was taken. The only thing that saved me so far is that they haven't allowed Rosie to be present each time they tried to execute me. Warden, where did the flowers come from? Well, they're from uh, Rosie LaBouche, the film star. I'll, I'll read the card. To Dave. May the red of these flowers bring you the warmth you deserve. Rosie. You must be very proud to have a friend like Rosie LaBouche. May I keep this as a souvenir? Oh, sure. Thank you. I'm allowed one last wish, right? Oh, of course. I'd like um, bubblegum. Bubblegum. Could you please put it in my pocket? I'll have it later. Thanks. Father, I want you to have those flowers for the altar in your church. Check out all sea traffic within 50 miles of the shore. Ten four. Oh, 
you finally showed up. Where the hell have you been? Well, it's a long story. Oh. Oh. What the hell is this? It smells like... Hell, it tastes like chewing gum. Whatever you say, Sarge, you're always right. Uh. Oh. Uh. Ah! Hey! Ah! Take it ah! easy, Sarge. Just stay in the center. You'll be fine. We're flying! Relax. Ah! Ah! Now listen. There's a lot I have to tell you. After I left you on the Barracuda. I want to drop the one that you never saw. Roger, what's the hurry? What's the rush? Both the cops are dead. Dunlop is, but I'm not so sure about Speed. He's going to show up sooner or later, and I don't want to be around when he does. You don't want to be around, huh? Where? Where are we going? Somewhere where a millionaire can live in style and peace. Cuba. Cuba. Cuba, huh? You know, I, I, I can't even speak the language. That's why we're going. program to bring you this special news report following up on our leads about the jailbreak of Dave Speed. Earlier today, a large balloon erupted from the sea heading towards outer space with two men attached. Mr. Bellucci here was fishing out of the Gulf and saw the event. Are these the two men? Yes, yes, those are the two men. Those are... Yes, la yes. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, the two men he pointed out are Dave Speed and the late Sergeant yes. Willie Dunlop. We'll be back with further developments on this most unusual event as soon as they happen. Understand now, Sarge? Yeah. Now, will you please get me down? Will you let Here go? She is. What do you want from me? You're going to be our passport out of here, baby. With you as hostage, Speed wouldn't dare try any of his superpower tricks. Did you get the plane? Oh, yes, madam, but we had to get rid of the pilot. You had to get rid of the pilot? Yeah. Who's gonna fly it? Who? I am. Who? I am. Come on, let's Come go. On. Hey, Bulls. Over my dead body. Hey, uh, Bulls. Take a look hey, over there. Uh, there. Look. So it's a balloon. Come on, you're wasting time. Let's go. Hey, look. Rosie and Torpedo are making a getaway. They've got Evelyn. They got Evelyn?
plane. Get out of there. Keep your hands up. Am I glad to see you guys? Am I glad? Well, what are you doing? Oh, David. Evelyn. Oh, David. Uh. Oh, I was so scared. Oh, Evelyn. Uh. Sorry, I put you through all Well, how did you do it? You know, my superpower. My greatest role. What an ending. I was a speed. Congratulations. Thank you, Chief. Oh, that was a fine piece of work. I knew you were innocent right from the beginning. Of course you did, Chief. I always knew the rows of the bouge and torpedo were the real culprits. Uh, you said that uh, Sergeant Dunlap was alive. Uh, uh, where is he? On the balloon. Yay! I'm sitting on top of the world. Don't you dare. Dave, I'm coming down. You gotta get me, baby. You gotta get me. Come on. No! be proud of Officer Dave Speed. He died in a valiant, vain attempt to save the life of his friend and superior officer, Sergeant William Dunlap. We'll remember them Excuse me. with fondness Excuse me. and pride. Excuse me, Chief. This call is hardly point. the moment. Have you no respect for the valiant dead? Now, I really think you should take this call, sir. It's a uh, long distance. Ah, huh? all right. Back and right. What? What? Oh. Is this some kind of a sick joke? That's right, Chief. That's right. We're, we're fine. Yeah, we're okay. Yeah. What? Where are we calling from? Uh, just a minute. Uh, where are we calling from? How are you, Honkaka? Honkaka! That's right! <laughs> Dave! Uncle Willie? Hello, Evelyn! How are you? Daddy's here just a minute. Evelyn! Hello, Evelyn. How are you? Oh, we're fine. That is, thanks to my superpowers. Let's get married. I know you'll learn to live with it. David Speed. Will you have this woman to be your lawfully wedded wife until death do you part? I will. Evelyn Dunlop, will you have this man to be your lawfully wedded husband? I will. By the powers invested in me, I pronounce you husband and wife. I now kiss the bride. Like every cop on the street, you will. 